I'd like to call the meeting, the district, the Chetland meeting to order. And we have the opening statement read. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> One item prior to uh, accepting the agenda, I would like to present a five-year award to Clay Bezendowski for his uh, work in Chetland, five years as counselor. Thank you very much, Clay. Okay, continue with business. Uh, thank you very much, Clay, for your, uh, uh, I guess, uh, volunteering to, uh, <laughs> to help you with. Thank you very much. Uh, adoption of the agenda. Is there any new business that need to be added to, uh, to the agenda prior to accepting? Uh, no? All those in favor? Minutes. Minutes for a regular meeting uh, held in December 16, 2019. Motion to accept. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Okay, we'll go right into delegations. We got a delegate? David. From BC Assessment. Hello. There we go. Test. Everybody hear me? Go. David, uh, I just didn't want to butcher your last name. Is it Keough or? It's Keo. Keo. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. I did it anyway. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, so thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Council. Thank you for um, administration for inviting me here today. Really appreciate it to talk about a um, little bit about the assessment process and then some highlights uh, for the 2020 uh, assessment role for the District of Chetwin. So what we're going to go over today is uh, a little bit about what about BC assessment, why we're created, what have you. Um, second, we'll go around a little bit around valuation, how we come to the values we we get onto the assessment role. Next, we'll go into the classifications of properties, um, what those mean, what those are. Um, the assessment cycle and some key dates within that cycle that um, administration and council might need to be aware of. Um, and then the relationship between assessments and taxes. Um, that's always a big question we, we get, especially at this time of year when the assessments are just getting out in the mail. And then the last thing we'll go over is the 2020 assessment role overview of everything that you'll see going into um, this year with the completed role. So who we are, what we do, and how we do it. Um, so the creation of BC Assessment was done in 1974, basically to create a nonpartisan um, body to, to look over assessment processes. Um, and that was created, recommended and created uh, for a provincial-wide assessment authority. Before that, 1974, it was basically done by different municipalities, rural dis districts, and what have you. Um, and there was a little bit of differences between each way those different organizations approached that, and that's why we were created in 1974. Um, and since the enactment of the Assessment Authority Act and the Assessment Act in 1974, 74, uh, BC assessments provide uniform and independent uh, valuation for the province of BC. Uh, the assessment role, basically it's the annual role every year. It's what we do is we want to um, identify the ownership value and classification and exemptions of every property within BC assessment. Um, this represents approximately over 2 million properties um, throughout BC and total value about $1.9 trillion. Um, so this, the, what the assessment role is for is basically to provide uh, stable, stable assessments for, for local governments and rural districts to, to apply their tax rates to um, for, their, for their budgets. Um, how we value different properties. So most properties, residential and commercial, basically they're valued as, as market value as of July 1st. Um, so within that, what we'll do is look at uh, sales that occurred within those properties. 
and within the years they occur. So this year's assessment role would have looked at sales that have occurred in 2019, sorry. Um, and we compare all those properties and that's what we get to the assessment values that come out on the assessment role this year. Um, within that, there's also legislated rates, regulated values. Most of those would be in your um, class four was it within your major industrial properties. Properties that don't have a lot of market shares or market changes, and those are those are valued on regulated rates. Same as farm values, um, farm land values are regulated rates as well too. So these are the nine classes that we we classify every property within. Um, the vast majority are going to be in your class one and class six, being residential class one and your business and other class six. Um, class two is going to be your utility properties. Class three is your supportive housing. Uh, class four is your major industry properties, which are typically your sawmills, big major industrial properties. Light industrial is class five. Business other class six, as I mentioned. Uh, class seven is your managed forests. Um, class eight is your recreational nonprofits. Typically, that's going to be your churches and what have you in those ones. And then your farm line is class nine. Uh, this one's a little tough to see with this, but this basically is our assessment cycle. Um, so every year we have a cycle in which we create the assessment rule, and those dates typically don't change or they never change. Um, so January 1st to, to January 31st, right now, right now we're in our inquiry cycle, and this is where um, the public is has received their assessment notice as of January 1st, and they are able to call into our our appraisers and discuss their values if they have issues with those values. Um, February 1st to basically March 31st is our appeal period. Um, that's a property assessment review panel that handles those appeals. Um, and this, this is basically another check of, of our work um, for the previous year. April 1st to September, September 30th, um, is basically when we do all our work. We're looking at our sales, analyzing it for our assessment role of the previous year. Um, within this cycle as well, there's also a property assessment review board deadline. Um, this is the appeal deadline that's after the part, uh, property assessment review panel. So if a decision comes in and the property owner disagrees with that at the property assessment review panel, they're able to appeal it to the next level. Um, and that's basically, that's based out of uh, Vancouver. And it's a, it's a lot, um, more in-depth review of the properties. Um, and the appeal deadline for that is April 30th. And another important um, date within this cycle is, is the July 1st deadline, or July 1st date, is where uh, we base all our market values on as of July 1st of each previous year. So that's where we look at the sales closest to that date, and those are the sales we would use to assess the assessment role. Uh, the next cycle between October 1st and December 31st, some key dates in there. Uh, October 31st is basically our state and condition date. So what, whatever the property is, the state and condition as of that date is what we'll use to assess the property. So an example of that is if you have a new house and it's 50% complete as of October 31st, that's what we'll use for the assessed value of the next year. So we don't, that's, that's the date we use for that. And it can be demos, house fires, things like that, that come into that date as well. There's a little bit more leeway with those type of things, but um, this is the day we base all, all the state and condition on. Uh, November 30th um, is our ownership date. Basically all new ownerships need to be processed by that date through with the land title office and get those onto the assessment roll. Um, and then December 31st is basically the notice when the notices are printed, um, shipped off, and put into the mail at Canada Post um, to get to get out to the customers as soon as possible. Um, so the, this next slide is basically about understanding the property assessments and, and the relationship with the property taxes. I think everybody in this this room understands that a little bit. Um, basically, what but what that is is the assessment value is is put out in January 20, January 1st. And that's what the values are going to be. And what's that's taken is taken against the property rate that's that's set by um, by the council and administration. Um, and there's deadlines within that that's set by the tax authority. And that's what that's going to be is is the taxes that's going to go out to the public. Um, we do get a lot of questions with that because we are part of that process, um, especially when we 
especially when we increase or decrease um, the property values. Um, so what we're, we're encouraging our staff to do is to make sure that we, we are taking the accountability of those increases of the assessments, because that's our work, um, and make sure we ex we're explaining to them at this time, um, these, are, these are the probable situations that might happen within your tax rates or your taxes that you're gonna get come July. Um, so this slide right here, this appears on the assessment notices now. And it's for information to, to give the owner a little bit of, of you know, forewarning of what might happen um, with their property taxes um, coming this year. So lower, lower than the average uh, change, obviously, taxes likely to decrease, and that's dependent, obviously. Um, similar to the average, there might be no change. And then higher than average, you know, there is a likelihood that your taxes will go up. Go up. Where previously we didn't have these types of slides on it, and it was um, potentially um, put a little bit of rift between potentially the administration and us because there was a time period where we'd pass it off to administration because we don't do taxes. Well, we're part of the taxes, so this is why we've created this this slide and this information on the assessment notice to make sure that people are aware that yes their taxes are going to go up when they see an increase potentially in their assessments any questions on those that first part of it before we dive into the 20 assessment overall view yes uh, what is the most common thing that uh, people miss when they uh, when the assessment is made do they believe that uh, I see you're giving out information here on this last slide you had. Is some of the stuff that uh, the common person, like myself, uh, when we go into it, like my assessment went down this year, and then the previous years it went up. What, what, what do we miss there? Is it just what you're telling us about the structure of the taxes? Is it because we go three months, and then we go to July 1st, and taxes are assessed? Yeah, so for the, when you see um, fluctuations within your assessment from year to year to year, it, it's dependent on what's, what sales have occurred within those, um, those different years. Um, you shouldn't see huge swings unless there's something to drive that swing. Um, typically, you, you might see, you see sales go up and down within, within districts and, and municipalities as well, too. So that should be the only thing which would go, make it go up and down within that, or unless you did something to your property. If you added a garage, then you're going to see an increase. Or if you tore down a garage, your assessment's potentially going to go down. So there's things like that that would influence the, the up and down within. So it's the stuff that I don't see. It's the sales. That's what I'm probably asking right now is that it's yeah. the sales that I didn't do nothing to my property, and so, and then all of a sudden I've, I have to pay more taxes. I guess that that's the question. It would probably be sales of properties yeah. in Chetwin or yeah, in the area. Yeah, that's okay. a question we get quite quite often. Okay. We'll go into a little bit that too of, yeah. of, of tools we've created to give the, to the public so they can actually go and see those sales and look at those sales too. So we'll, I'll show those slides too. That, that is the most common thing of why did my assessment go up when I didn't do anything to my house. So. So we'll move in here to the um, the assessment role and the changes. So this slide is basically a comparative between what's what's occurred provincially and then what's actually occurred in the district of Chetland. Um, so provincially, um, the amount of properties we have assessed is, has gone up around one percent. So that's just over. Um, that slide's a little off. It should be one two billion properties. Um, the assessment role. The assessment rolls dropped across the province. Um, you know, the values dropped down to $1.9 trillion. Um, and I think anybody who's seen the media lately um, around the assessment role has seen the values in Vancouver starting to slip right now. And that's why this value is, has dropped a little bit. Um, and then non-market change um, across the province has dropped as well, comparative to last year at $27.1 billion. Um, so for the District of Chetwin, we haven't seen any property changes. So there's 1,412 properties within Chetwin that are, that are assessed. Um, within that, um, the value of, of that assessment has dropped 422 million. And then the NAR market change has, has dropped as well to 1.6 approximate million dollars as well too for the NAR market change. And we'll go into those slides a little bit detail, detailed as well too. 
Um, so this is just a 10 year comparison. Um, and this is a comparison of net general values. Um, so the assessment rule for, for the district of Chatwin has seen, seen gentle increase since 2011, slight drop in 2018, but it's around $350 million. So what this slide is showing here, this is the non-market change for Chetwin. Um, so basically what non-market change is, is any type of um, change to, typically it's around new, new construction is what we typically uh, refer to it as, but it can also cover things like zoning changes, use changes, little things like that that will change the value um, within a property. So you have a value that changes zoning from a residential property to a commercial zoning. That's potentially gonna change the valuation and also change the class. So you could see a switch. So you'll see a reduction on a class one and that'll move over into a class six valuation. So that's what this, this slide is showing here. Um, and just to note, um, before I came up, some of these numbers, especially the class two zoning, um, wasn't looking correct to me. So I looked into this and we've made uh, Mr. Franzen aware of, of the change. Um, class two, you can see it had a decrease of this 638,000. That's not correct. That should be an increase of 151,000 uh, for knock market change in class two. Um, and the reason why that occurred was there, an error, there was an error by our staff in keying the classification on the property. So within that as well, there's a change in the uh, class five. We'll, we'll be dropping in, in that class down to 500,000. So just to make council aware that that change has is, is, is occurred. Um, basically a week ago, so. And then this, the total at the bottom gives you, gives you all the, all the non-market change uh, for all classes total there at the $1.6 million. So this is the total, total assessment roll for Chatwin. Let me just pull up my paper here because I can't read that. So this is the breakdown of all the different classes. Um, within the district of Chetwin. So the highlight ones, um, the residential class one, we've seen a slight drop of 1.35%. Um, and then in class class six, we've seen a 4.5 um, increase in, within class six uh, properties. Uh, I think David? Yes. Is that what the correction from the previous slide? So that, this will, this will need, be, need to be corrected as well. So the previous slide was just non-market change. Yep. So the change within this will be will be affected as well too. So yep. within class two, you'll see you'll see an increase within that to to normal. It's around seven hundred ninety thousand dollars that was added to class two. And let me pull up. So the class two is increasing from. It was 638,200 and that'll be going up to 151,800. So that's an increase in change of 790. And then class five is decreasing from 1.323 to 533,000. And that's a change of 790,000. So it's just a swap in that 790,000 between the two classes. Um, so yeah, big, a little bit of change within the major industry that's that's gone up the 2.58 and also within light industry the 13.36 uh, percent change within that class as well too any questions on this slide at all no okay So I'm not sure if everybody can see this, but this is what basically this slide is showing is just the distribution of value change across all properties um, within the district of Chetwin. Um, so our appraisers use this to, to see when there is huge, big fluctuations in certain, in certain classes um, and why that, that is occurring. Um, so within the residential single family, um, you can see there's approximately 15 or 50 that are in the 10 to 15 percent increases. So our staff would use this and see, you know, why did those increase? Are these homes that just have been renovated or sold or fixed up or what have you to make sure that their their values are correct on those type of properties and make sure a distribution isn't spread across all these different increases because we want to see you 
typically you'd see um, most of them within a five to 10% change. Um, wherever they landed on this percent change, you want the, the majority of them to move the same and not have those big fluctuations where you're gonna have your neighbors going up five and you're going down 10 and that doesn't make a lot of sense to, to the public when they see that and they're able to look at that kind of stuff. So that's why we want our staff to, to look at these type of things and, and make sure that they're that the increases and decreases to all the properties that they're making um, make sense. And this is also a, t a tool that we um, share with administration um, to, so they can see that too. And they're, they're able to ask questions as well of, of why these are changing so much and why they're going down. So, so it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, slide and, and tool we use um, to, to basically audit our work. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, where, where do we get the parking class from? Like you're saying they're 50, which is 10.1 to 50 percent, like 10.1 to 50 percent of what? Like I don't get what that is. Where's the property? Does that show in our assessment when we received it in the mail what property costs were in? Yes. Oh, it doesn't? Yes. Okay. You'll have, um, within every box, you'll have a, they'll, they'll show at least two. If, if there's a property that has, there's potential properties have like three or four or five, it's not going to show those. But typically for residential properties, it's going to show your class one. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll show your class one within there. Okay. Same vice versa with class six, it'll show business and other in there as well too. Okay. So, any questions on this slide here? No. Okay. All right. So this graph is basically showing a single family sale trends. Um, this is all the way back to uh, the first quarter of 2016. So we can see a little bit of a spike in 2016, but after that, it, it is, is quite quite flat, up, ups and downs here and there. And those those red lines are between the second and first and the second and third quarter, which is basically our July 1st deadline. So those are the sales on each side of those that we typically would use to to set the assessment rule. When you have a, a, enough sales to set the assessment rule, um, sometimes. Within the district of Chapman, you may have to go out even more to get even more sales within closer to the January, December dates to get information to give you the best picture of what the assessment role is doing um, for that year. Uh, this, and this slide is put in here just to give you a little bit of uh, an idea of what's happening across um, northern BC and the median um, single family dwellings. Um, that we always put out within our uh, news releases. Um, so you can see here, Chetwin's around in that minus 3%. So when I say single family dwellings, this is just houses. This isn't just class one, this is just your single family dwelling houses. Included in this is gonna be your manufactured homes, your stratas, things like that will be in this, this number here. Um, so this is just compared to the rest of the province, or the rest of the, the North region. Uh, you can see some, obviously some higher areas within the the Northwest and Kennebec and Terrace, forty-one percent and twenty percent in Terrace, um, considering what's what's occurring in those those municipalities at this time. Um, this next slide is just compared it to what's going on across across the province. Um, seeing as you as you look through these, you can see that most of these are in the municipalities in the in the uh, lower mainland, and you are seeing where the drops are occurring from eleven percent, two percent across the lower mainland and seeing a few increases within the Kootenays um, and the Okanagan as well too, comparative to, to what's happening in District of Chapman. Excuse me. Yes. So, so the last couple of slides, these are the average. Uh, oh, the last couple of slides, these, these are the average uh, market value. Yes, the average assessment values for, for each one of the municipalities Thank within you. that. And just for, just for single family. Um, so this is this is a tool we've created over the last three or four years um, that's that's really given the public a, another opportunity to to look at what's occurred in sales and not have to sit on the phone with us waiting for an appraiser to answer their calls. So this is our assessment search, and what you're able to do is you can search any any property you want, not just your own. You can search your neighbors, what have you, um, within this, and it'll give you what their assessment was for this year and also compare it to what it was last year. So I'll just pull up a slide here. This is a property in, in Williams Lake um, that 
up in the top, top right hand corner, it'll give you what it's assessed for for the for the 2020 assessment rule. And down below that, it'll give you your previous year assessments. And then within that, down at the bottom, it'll give you your basic uh, assessment information, your year built, your bedrooms, your square footages, um, your size of your land, first floor and second floor um, square footage. Um, and then it'll also give, um, just in the right hand column, if, the, if there was any sales of this property over the last three years here. So we can see this property um, sold um, 2019 for $389,000. So also within this site, um, at the top, there's, there's a sampled sale. So what it will do is if you click on this box, it'll take your property and pull up all the properties, well, pull up 15 properties that, um, that have sold that are, that are compared to yours or near your house. So we'll give you that information. Um, so you can look into further, you can get the details as there's a few details button on each one of those sales, you can go in and get that square footage and see how it compares um, to your home. Um, the next one is, is the neighboring properties. So you can go and look up your neighbor's properties if you have similar houses or what have you. Is my neighbor's property assessed the same as mine? What's different? No, does it make sense? If it doesn't make sense, I'm going to call the assessment and ask, ask questions why. Um, so that's that's basically my presentation. Uh, any questions? So, if, if somebody's not clear on why their neighbor's assessment is different from theirs, what's the what's the um, most common answer to that? Um, like, would it just be the quality of? It could be. It could be the quality. There could be square footage differences right. that your neighbor doesn't know about. Say your basement's finished and theirs isn't. You may right. not know that if you haven't been. Oh, okay. And then or, they can actually get that information. Um, typically, we, we'll, we'll, we were able to tell them it's been renovated, but other than that, okay, we're, we're not giving out. Um, and then my other question is, and it seems silly, but uh, so are you visually assessing these homes every year? No, no, we're, we're not. It's it's. Typically for us to go out to properties, um, it's going to be a sales have occurred on a property, uh, building permits have per uh, happened, or there's no inquiry or a neighbor complaint. Right, so so I'm not sure, may, maybe there is a, a permit involved in, in um, like you say, taking down a, a structure on your property. I don't know if there is, but if there, is there? Would there be? Okay, so then there, there would be, um, if your property assessment went down because you moved a property, that would all be in the records. Yeah, okay. thank yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. And another, I'll try to find the slide here. Something we've, we're starting to do, I'm not sure if everybody noticed what this building was that's on this picture, um, but this is the community center here in the District of Chetwin. Um, so we're using a lot of aerial photography and tools within that to use to get those things where we maybe don't get permits or we don't know. This is another way for us to, to fly a district and get everything from an outside perspective. Um, so and one thing we're using now is trying to use change det detection, which is we'll see, we'll have an old picture and we'll compare it to our new one. And we, you know, there's a good assumption that something's occurred on this property that would affect the assessment. So if we can't get it from the aerials, that's where it would also trigger uh, inspection of that property. Um, we're also using it to find where garages are built without permits. So you'd have an overview of a property one year, and the next year, oh, all of a sudden there's a new structure on the back, we better go out and take a peek at it. If we can't add it from an aerial, aerial photography or what have you too. So those are other tools we're trying to use to, to make sure that our assessments and our information is up to date as much as possible because we do get a lot of that those questions of no if we don't go and visually inspect every property it would uh, it'd be a tough job to do across right. the province so we're trying to use other tools to, to get that information and make sure we have um, the public's confidence that we are getting all the information up to date as, as soon as possible within every municipality and every rural jurisdiction within the province too so Yeah. For the white industry, it went up 13.36%. Was that just strictly sales then? 
that is part of that seven ninety correction. Yeah. So the light industry, there's that there's that correction you talked about that that's going to adjust. So within the NAR market change, it's going to you know, within this slide, it's going to drop uh, seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. So so within that, that's going to basically cut that in half, and that percentage is going to be a lot lower. So any any type of change within um, so our major industry, light industry, we don't have sales to sales aren't used to value those properties. Those are usually your regular regulated rates or cost um, values associated with those properties. Um, so any increase or decreases could be updates to to those structures or anything like that. So that's what would increase or decrease those values. <coughs> Talk about confidence uh, from the public. Uh, just a question: uh, How many uh, working? How many workers does uh, BC Assessment have? How many people in the BC Assessment? Uh, across the province, we have just under 800 across the province. So within um, my office, which is responsible for all the North Region, which is basically from just north of uh, Chase up including the Queen Charlotte's, we have around 70 employees. So it's a large area to, to cover for, for us, and that's why we need these other tools to help us um, make sure we have the information up to date. Yeah, we thought it was uh, Hope and uh, North that they didn't care about, not Chase. <laughs> that's another subject. I, I, know, I know where you're going with that. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay. More questions. I'm sorry, okay. can I go back to that um, one with the percentages, property cost percentages at the top? I, I, I guess I, I was a little confused where where the percentages, like I don't get, like 10.1 to 15, and then there's 15.1 to 20. What numbers, like how do you fit into their numbers? So, so let's just look at single family dwellings for now. Yes. So all the properties within that that row are all single family dwellings. Yeah. So the 50, there's so there's 50 single family dwellings that their assessments went up 10 to 15%. Oh, so that's their, what they went up to 10, between their percentages. So, okay. Yeah. I yeah. just didn't know what their percentage was. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions for David? Thank you very much for coming to Chapman and I uh, hope you. Uh, I didn't uh, hit any moose or uh, go around any deer or <laughs> any snowbanks. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation. Oh, thank you today, and um, we appreciate the, like, working with uh, Mr. Franz. He's very supportive in, in helping us out to uh, create the assessment role as well, too. So we always get lots of questions, and questions are always good for the administration, too. So we appreciate it. So thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome, David. that we do attend because they do come from the community so if we could do one quarterly or uh, midterm uh, like uh, mid-year I guess from what's going on so we have an update uh, for our community so that they could grab it off our website and do that so can we all agree to that sure I can actually give you a little bit of uh, information that's coming up on something that probably before our next meeting 
Yeah, you got you. Uh, um, go, go right ahead. Uh, actually, no. Well, anyways, um, the community or um, Sereras Place is hosting a um, their fundraiser, yearly fundraiser banquet. Um, it's on February the eighth at the Legion. I believe it's the Legion. So, um, yeah, we're hoping to stay open to get a bunch of donations, and they have one fantastic prize right now that um, I'm not going to reveal, but it keeps me popular, so I'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, keep your eyes open for that ad that's coming up in the paper. Okay, yeah, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we'll continue. Oh, hang on. One more? Two seconds, Al. Okay. Um, the Chetwin International Chainsaw Carving Competition will be presenting next meeting. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, with that, uh, we will continue our meeting. Discussion item. Email from Dawson Creek City, dating December 10th, 2019. Support of approval, open letter of support for approval. that council authorized the mayor to signature to be added to the open letter of support regarding the environmental and social responsible manner in which natural gas is developed in Western Canadian communities. Do I have a second? Sorry. Any discussion? Um, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm assuming the letter is this on page three. This is the letter that we're going to be sending, right? Or you're going to sign? Yes. And all the mayors are signing this letter? Is that what this is? Yes. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? I mean, those in favor? Carry. Okay. E2, email from Peace River Regional District dated December 4th, 2019, 19-203, Makaira referral. make that recommendation that we receive for information. We'll second that. Okay, receive for information. D13. Email from Peace River Regional District date December 17, 2019, 19-204 <coughs> Brewster referral. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, we never voted on that last one. I believe if I'm not, if I'm online here, I think information, does it have to be voted on? Uh, it's best to give somebody a ten degree and Okay, okay, so we will go back to D12 and we will vote on that for information, receiving information for a piece of a regional district, uh, date December 4, 2019. 19-203, Makaira referral. All those in favor? Okay, set for discussion. D1-3, email for Peace River Regional District dated December 17, 2019, 19-204, Brewster referral. I'll make the recommendation that council receive for information. Second. All those in favor? Okay. We're on to correspondence. Uh, does anybody have anything there that they want to pull out of correspondence? C2. C2. For discussion, any other items? Okay. Does anybody else have anything to come out of the 
Okay. Not hearing any. We will we will need to accept C1. I'll make that motion to Three. accept C1 to C10, except for C2 for discussion. Second. All those in favor? Carried. Okay, we will discuss uh, C2. Oh, I just have a question Sorry. about it. Because we have an alternate electrical area director, are we filling this report out? Or are we filling out? Staff. Um, it's up to each individual councillor if you want to fill it out. They want to, they want to get feedback from everybody who's interested in this. So every councillor or just the area rep? Every councillor. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you. I move to receive. Sorry. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Carried. reports community child care planning we have number nine to do the information items do you want to receive them oh yes that's i'll make a motion to that i'll make a motion to receive the information items i'll second it any discussion about them all those in favor <clears throat> very good. thank you Okay, uh, reports to action for action. Community child care planning. I'll make sure to vote this before I make this recommendation or before someone does make this recommendation. Um, in the recommendation, it says that um, the district will fund any expenses associated with this project that exceed the funding award from the program. Um, what are we kind of looking at when we're talking? We will just go ahead and fund that when we're talking about building a new date. Like, what are we talking about? Okay. Yeah, this was kind of an unusual request from uh, the province. They just want assurance that if we exceed the 25000 that we would fund it. But when we get a grant, we make sure we don't exceed what we're given. So to me, it's a moot point, but they wanted that assurance in the, in the resolution. Do you think we will go over on this? No. Okay. Okay, then I will make that recommendation that Council authorize administration to submit an application to the Community Care Child Care Planning Program for funding in the amount of $25,000 <coughs> to participate in a child care planning activities in order to develop a community care, child care space creation action plan and further the district of general funding expenses, expenses associated with the projects that exceed the funding awarded from the program. Me a second. Any more discussion on it? <coughs> All those in favor? Okay. So R E two charge north initiative for electrical vehicle charging station. I'll make the recommendation that the district of Chapman participate in the Charge North EV network project in the Associated Northern Development Initiative Trust grant offer and dedicate a total of up to $12,000 to be funded from the gas tax reserve fund for the cost of two level two public electric vehicle charging stations on district of Chapman owned land. I'll second. Discussion? I noticed in our next application, the development permit, that he has is also plotting to have mm -hmm. electric plug-ins too. So the uh, the developer, it, would it be wise for us to spend money on on a charger if somebody's going to put one in or, um, privately? Because I, I had this discussion. We had this discussion last year or something like that. They've got one at the. Um, PV Martin Dawson Creek, and it, it's been used uh, three times in the course of a year type of deal. Uh, is, it, is it worth the taxpayer's money to put one in if somebody's going to put one in private? I agree. I, I don't know if it is either. Okay. Any more discussion? I would like to say that if we don't uh, have any place to for people to use uh, 
I guess uh, if we didn't have a gas station, we would use vehicles. So if we have electric EVs out there, uh, they need places to plug in. So when we do talk about uh, private and and us doing it, and we we represent the public in a big way, and if they need somewhere to plug in their vehicles, if they do have one, if they have two or three, and maybe we would like to have this thing put into effect where if we're going to show the public that we are putting them out there, you should be applying to get a vehicle if you're not, if you're on the bubble of deciding you're gonna have one. So with the footprint, and uh, it's been talked about throughout the world now about carbon. So the footprint is there, and if we go about saying that, oh, we're not gonna have any, the district gentleman, but privately somebody's gonna put one in, we should be evaluating ourselves on if we're uh, going to be associated with not being participants in the carbon footprint. But Chetwin, and on the other hand, Chetwin has been doing a very good job at it. I think we should continue to do a very good job at it. And if we do put one in, I think we'd get subsidized for or fund that from 12, I believe, to, is it, uh, Carol, could you, uh, well, that, here. that is the subsidized amount. The um, Charge North is actually taking on two thirds of the cost, so one third of the cost of two charges would be twelve thousand. Okay, so six six thousand uh, dollars. Up to it could be less. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, that that's my point with all this. That uh, we need to be forward thinking, and uh, if that's twelve thousand dollars, that's going to make somebody believe that we are doing the right thing. And I believe we are doing the right thing in this case. Uh, if council figures otherwise, that's that's totally uh, how we uh, manage here. So that's, they're, they're putting in $12,000 for two. And we don't have to pay anything, is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. 12,000 is the district's portion. If we decide to go with it, Charge North is taking on two thirds more, so. Twelve thousand would be the district's portion. And they're going to, they're sort of thirty-six thousand to put in. For the two, yeah, and they're they're actually uh, doing all the sourcing. The only thing we'll have to be responsible for is installing it. Laura, I, I, like I, I could see where you're coming from, Mal, because putting these in isn't isn't our taxpayers aren't going to be using them. It's going to be people that are traveling through that are going to be using them, right? I mean, if people in our town and taxpayers have them, they're going to plug into their own house. I mean, so they're not going to come plug in a town. But they might have to if their vehicle starts dying, I guess. They might have to plug in somewhere. But I can see what you mean by taxpayers. Might Eventually, they're going to have to be, be brought in. But uh, you don't see the Vancouver or, or, or Victoria putting a gas station. Why? I, I just don't see the point of us as a government putting, doing something that the private, the private sector should be responsible for. That's only my opinion. Any more on it? I guess, well, can we do some research within the area? You know, what does Fort St. John, Dawson Creek have? They're probably, do, well, Dawson has them. Does Fort St. John, do we know? And can we find out how often they're used? I don't know if that's uh, if information would be available. Go ahead, Carol. Um, I think that they're just begin. They're not common yet, but this Char Charge North organization is actually approaching all the municipalities in this area. And um, right now, BC Hydro has a grant to install the fast charging level one charge station. So they're coming up, but they they only have funding to go as far as McLeod Lake. So if somebody is driving an electric vehicle, they can go to the fast charging stations, but only as far as McLeod Lake in 2020. Other than that, that have to depend on either uh, privately run ones or Charge North is, is proposing that these public ones be available as well. So it's kind of an initiative that's reaching all the municipalities in the North right now. Thank you. Do we have to have two? Could we start with one, maybe? Carol, did 
Is that a fact that we need to? Yep. No, we don't need to. We don't need any. But I mean, it's council's um, decision whether you want one or or none or two. No. Nope. So we could reach out with the developer that's putting the the new place in to see if he's actually going to put one in, and maybe he could get grants further to do it, and then it would be in the hands of the private sector, and it wouldn't be an ongoing cost for the taxpayer. He is putting in four actually, and I asked him if he's going to charge it. He is. He's charging the public for use of them. One one of the things that I've uh, been talking about about our our community too is that when we we have something here that's pretty special and the special meaning that when you come out of the pass and if you use an electric vehicle uh, how far do you have to go right so if if public or if private has one that that's great because if we should at least have one uh, in our community and when you have private private means that they could just shut down at you know, if things aren't going uh, right. So in the future, maybe if uh, we decide today that we're not going in that, in that uh, direction, that we uh, revisit it again. If not, and we do have one, that's perfect. But we do have something special here in Shetland, and that means that when they come visit the Peace River Regional uh, area, they come through Shetland. And us here, we have quite the opportunity to make ourselves uh, available to everybody that goes through. And one of my points uh, that I, I'd like to always put forward is that a person that's uh, dealt with something and had been educated here, Dawson Creek, Fort St. John, uh, Vancouver, he's going to use his skills somewhere. And that's the same thing as using your electric vehicle, you're going to use it somewhere. It doesn't matter if it's being used here in Chetland, getting charged here in Chetland. It's going to be used somewhere. So why not have something here viable in Chetland so that if they're going to use it, they're going to use it here. And uh, that's uh, something that kind of makes me wonder uh, about how we present ourselves. We need to present, us, present ourselves in a fashion that makes Chetland the place that they stop and carry on to the next community and say, yes, they treated me well there in Chapman. And that's probably the biggest thing. We're the most that goes through everybody. So anyway, <clears throat> that's uh, the little thing from uh, the electric. So any more discussion? Clay? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've been supportive of this since day one because I felt that Chapman does need a charging port in town just for the reasons that you're saying. Um, but I do agree with Councillor Deck too, and you've convinced me. Um, it on the taxpayers, it's not going to be a taxpayer using it. Now, it's not the first time that we pay for something that the taxpayers don't directly use. And we have a budget for tourism, which is who we'd be catering to here. But I think the real problem is that we're going to be in competition with a private uh, taxpayer. And, and I have a problem with that. Like, I don't think that we would stand outside our visitor center and cook cheeseburgers because it's not responsible to the tax paying businesses in town, the restaurants there. So if there's plans for these charging ports to go to private businesses, that's that's a very smart idea because if they're gonna a choice of restaurants and they're gonna go to this one because it's a charging port out there, then that's free enterprise. And, and I don't think that we should be competing with private companies within the district. So on the other hand, it's a good chance to do this with it being two thirds paid for, but um, I think investment wise, I agree with it, but I, I am against competing with private tax paying. I'm just curious, do you know, Carol, um, the private company, are they doing the high speed charging or are they doing the phase two, the slower speeds? I don't actually know. I asked him, but he didn't have a chance to get back to me. So can we just receive this for information and put this off until we know for sure? I mean, it's been a couple years now, one more you're probably not going to hurt at least six months, right? And we'll know by then what he's going to be putting in or if he's, if this is going to get or whatever. Is that possible? 
I agree with having the charging station one way or the other, but if the private sector is putting it in, like, like you said, there's no, no sense in competing with them. Yeah, because yeah, once we, we put it in, it's going to be in the hands of the private sector. Yeah. Odds are no one's ever going to use ours because they'll go to the restaurant and eat while that's charging, right? That's the idea. That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. We've got a proposal here to. So, would we receive this for information, Carol, and then bring it back, or how would you like us to do this? So, okay. there's a motion on the floor. Oh, sir. Um, yeah. Oh, to, that's okay. That to go ahead with it. So you could either withdraw the motion, defeat it, and then we're table it. I say let's defeat it and we can always bring it back as a motion in the future. Then that way we, we've, yeah, I'm good the discussion has been, we've discussed it. And if we, we're going to entertain the thought, if uh, business is business, and if something happens to the business, <clears throat> then we entertain the thought as putting, putting our own up as, uh, and, but our uh, funding might not be there for that, so we, we have to <clears throat> think about it. So, I say let's defeat it, and then we will bring it up as a motion if uh, things don't go well. But okay, they have to call for a vote or Yes. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay, RA3, development permit number 01-2020-5000-5054, access <coughs> I'll make a recommendation that council approve the issuance of development permit number 01-2020 to Sweet Pal Chowan on behalf of DAP Group Limited to permit a gas bar and dining restaurant with a drive through on the property 5000 and 5040 North Access Road, lots A and B. Uh, plan EPP 72967, District Lot 398, subject to the sale, to sale of the property and approval for Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? I have a question, I guess. Um, yes. <laughs> once so, once the, the, if this is approved tonight by us, um, what's the, what's the next steps then? What happens to it now? Uh, once this is approved, it's subject to sale of property, but the property is supposed to go, the conveyancing is supposed to happen at the end of this month. So the developer is getting all of his ducks in a row so that when the weather gets uh, conducive to construction, he could just start going right away. <coughs> so the next step is for the sale to go through, which is supposed to be at the end of this month. Okay. Any more on that? Yes. Okay. Uh, Call the question. All those in favor? Oh, okay. okay. Okay, we're on the reports of information. Uh, building permit. Oh, building permit value. Motion to receive. Second. Discussion. I just make a comment on the status yeah. when you only see one permit given all for the whole year. Maybe. Yeah, I'm going to read it. Hey, Chairman. 